directly from some of these Pokemon. So it'll be interesting to see how this mirror match plays out. Yeah, I don't know. When you're um, commentating, I mean, a mirror match is awesome because it really allows you to get into sort of the mentality and the strategies that are being played on the table. But, you know, when you're sitting down and playing that mirror match, you have to wonder, like, well, are they thinking the same thing I'm thinking? Or are they thinking something different? So should I be thinking that? And it just goes mind game after mind game after mind game to the point where you probably, you know, confused yourself. Yeah, now the one benefit, <laughs> Wolf is no stranger to these mirror matches we saw in the World's Top Cut That's last year. Wolf true. had to go through his, his own team a couple of times, so... Uh, More than once on the big stage, too, yep. I believe. So these players are both veteran players. I'm sure they're used to having to, uh, you know, wage that mind war in these mirror matches, so... It'll be really, really exciting to see because I always love seeing how these players kind of react to seeing how their opponent plays and that adjustment they make as the match goes on. Uh, normally, you know, you kind of start a little on the safer end without making too many risky plays. But then if you really get a read on how your opponent plays, you can start to take some chances, start to make some big predictions that can really swing a match in your favor. And if you are that confident that you really have a read on how the opponent is going to play, it makes it a little less risky to go for those moves. Yeah, um, so if you were playing this mirror match, or any mirror match really, would you go for those big plays first, or would you uh, no, sort of I, feel them out like you just I've said? I've always been more risk averse at the beginning, <laughs> uh, really even throughout the entire match until I'm really forced to make some risky decisions. I always try and play a little safer, try and make what seems to me as the best play. Sometimes that is a seemingly you know wild prediction, but if that seems like the safest play, then uh, I'm always for that. I don't like taking big risks, um, and I think Wolf plays in a similar style. You usually see him switching out when he's faced, even in a 50-50 spot. He doesn't want to go for those 50-50s. He is a much safer player uh, because he feels like the longer the match goes, the more the advantage he has, and that he's you know, just going to come out on top. Uh, as long as he doesn't put himself into those kind of coin flip situations. Yeah, so once again, we have the teams on screen. Both Wolf and Leonard are running the same six Pokemon. Uh, Garchomp, Arcanine, Celesteela, Ninetales, Snorlax, and Tapu Koko. Um, it looks like there are a couple differences that we can see so far. For example, uh, Leonard's Ninetales is a female, and Wolf's Ninetales is a male. So. Not that we're going to see any sort of uh, of those kind of mechanics coming into play. Yeah, most likely, no rivalry Pokemon in this <laughs> matchup, unfortunately. Although or, these are two rivals here. Or attract, or uh, <laughs> <laughs> none of those moves. At least not that we've seen in the metagame so far. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see these Snorlax sets. Um, there's two common uh, ways for Snorlax to set up. There's either Curse, which is the longer, more drawn out, more defensive way of setting Snorlax up. But then there's Belly Drum, which is the immediate, just cut your HP in half, use that berry to bring it back up to full HP, and then you have massive, massive attack and you just one hit KO everything. Uh, well, maybe not the Celesteela that we see both <laughs> players have, but Snorlax, it'll be very interesting because in general, if that Belly Drum Snorlax gets set up, uh, that can kind of overpower the curse Snorlax if Snorlax is unable to get a bunch of curses up beforehand. So it'll be interesting to see if they're both Belly Drum, if one's curse, or if they're both curse. And then if they are Belly Drum, what is the speed of the Snorlax? Is, is one maybe one point faster than the other where, you know, if they're both at max attack after a Belly Drum, whichever one's faster is just going to KO the other. So it'll be interesting to see how those Snorlaxes are trained. Well, we're going into the first game here of round three at the Pokemon North American International Championships. Uh, Wolf Glick versus Leonard Craft. These trainers have selected their Pokemon. Our first indication of how the mind games are going to play out here. Ninetales and Tapu Koko out on the field for Leonard. Wolf sending out his own Tapu Koko and Ninetales. All right, so we see Tapu Koko and Arcanine there. The Intimidate won't really matter too much. Uh, we do see the electric surge from Leonard's Tapu Koko goes first, so maybe that's a big deal. Maybe they're just a speed tie, um, but it'll, it'll be interesting to see if Leonard's Tapu Koko does end up being faster because that's an important set of knowledge for Wolf as he goes uh, through this matchup. But Arcanine here threatens Ninetales, uh, but it doesn't want to take a lot of damage from Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko could potentially be an electric Z move. That would deal massive damage with Arcanine, so you do still have to be a little bit careful with the Arcanine. Ninetales, though, can go for the Aurora Veil, um, or if it has Protect, it could go for that. But sometimes Ninetales do decide to 
drop protect in favor of maybe like an icy wind or some other more supportive move. Yeah, Ninetales is one of those Pokemon that while it can do damage with something like Blizzard, for example, like I think we saw last round, um, it's also very good defensively and sometimes you just want it to set up that Aurora Veil and then leave the field. Uh, Ninetales did just leave the field as a matter of fact. Uh, Leonard sending out his Garchomp instead. Wolf switching things up as well. Uh, Arcanine leaving the field in favor of the Snorlax Volt Switch from Wolf's Tapu Koko into the Garchomp, and Leonard using his own Volt Switch to switch out his Tapu Koko uh, gets the opportunity here to send in something that might be able to help him take down that Snorlax. Yeah, so that first turn was a great example of how Wolf prefers to play a little safer. He switched out his Arcanine despite being against the Ninetales because he knew there was a very real chance of it either switching out or protecting. Uh, and he knew maybe Arcanine would have been targeted by an attack. It didn't end up being targeted, but Wolf still made the correct read there, um, you know, playing a little on the safer end. And this is going to be really big. What is this Garchomp set? <laughs> How is it trained? Does it have a Z move? Is it Scarf and going to be faster than the Tapu Koko? It could have so many different sets. It could have a Salt Vest and be able to take a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see how both players decided to train their Garchomp and what kind of sets they went for. But right now, Tapu Koko, uh, again, it can go for another Volt Switch, this time targeting Ninetales, seeing as Ninetales. Sometimes they don't carry Protect, uh, but that could be a little risky. Maybe Wolf decides to just switch it out without going for a Volt Switch. Yeah, information is the name of the game here during game one. Tapu Koko out speeding that Garchomp using Dazzling Gleam to lower its health just below 50%. Ninetales following up with an icy wind, not going to make a difference much on that Snorlax because it's already so slow, but that Tapu Koko now has its speed lowered by one stage, potentially allowing that Garchomp to be faster. Leonard's Garchomp using Sword Stance to boost its attack two stages, so whatever attack it's going to use next could deal a ton ton of damage, but Snorlax trying to knock out the Garchomp with a frustration, misses the knockout and takes a little bit of damage in recoil from the rough skin. But we do see the hail, barely not enough to take out Garchomp, but one more turn of hail should pick up the KO. Uh, unfortunately, that Tapu Koko is now no longer faster than both Pokemon thanks to the Icy Wind, and a lot of times Snorlax don't have Protect, so if this Garchomp, which it seems like it's very likely after seeing the Sword Stance, has the Tectonic Rage, you can fire it off in that Snorlax slot, but you do still have to be wary about Celesteela. Um, so you could always target the Tapu Koko slot if you're predicting that. And that way, if Tapu Koko protects, you just go right through the protect and knock it out. So it'll be interesting to see which one Leonard decides to target here with the Tectonic Rage. Yeah, or maybe he will just try and save it for later because he's too afraid of getting that Celesteela switch in. There's so many like variables that are still out on the field. Um, this Ninetales, I mean, Icy Wind worked really well for it last turn, but now that it's done its job in terms of speed, maybe it'll set up like an Aurora Veil this turn. Uh, Tapu Koko not wanting to keep that speed drop around Arcanine coming out on the field in its place, intimidating that Garchomp as well. So whatever attack it uses this turn uh, won't be as powerful. Wolf switching out the Snorlax and sending in the Celesteela, so definitely an indication that he's uh, potentially worried about that Tectonic Rage, about maybe an Earthquake. Ninetales with the Aurora Veil uh, going to help Leonard's Pokemon stick around for a little bit longer, and there's that Tectonic Rage. Let's see who this is into. Let's see who this is into. Gar Did Leonard predict that Celesteela? I don't know. Garchomp surrounded by the power of its Z-move, and the attack will connect. So Leonard did not attack the Celesteela, instead attacking that Arcanine, sending it plummeting into the core of the planet. Uh, will Arcanine be able to survive this attack? Most likely, definitely not. <laughs> Great turn for Le uh, Leonard there, setting up the Aurora Veil. Uh, that was you know, a pretty free turn to set it up because Garchomp is going to KO something. It's going to go for that Tectonic Rage with Hail about to knock it out and with the increased stages of attack from the Swords Dance. And Ninetales, being faster now than Tapu Koko, can go for the Aurora Veil no matter what. So that was a guaranteed play from Leonard. The question ended up being, who does he decide to target with that Tectonic Rage? Knowing that Wolf has Celesteel on his team, it's a very likely option for this matchup, so he had to think it was probably going to come in. Wolf, you know, he knows that Snorlax probably doesn't have Protect, but Leonard also figures that most Snorlaxes don't have Protect. That's probably the slot where Celesteel comes in. So he decided to target Tapu Koko. That's going to guarantee a KO if it switches out to Arcanine like it did. There's the KO if it stays in and protects. There's the KO if it stays in and doesn't protect thanks to Icy Wind. It's going to outspeed you and KO. So great play there by Leonard. 
Yeah, how do you follow up such a great play? I mean, we have two Tapu Koko staring down each other on the opposite side of the field. Maybe start from that? Yeah, now Leonard knows it's at least a speed tie, so his own Tapu Koko can KO uh, Wolf's Tapu Koko. Um, Ninetales just got up in Aurora Veil, so neither... Uh, well, Ninetales will have to watch out for Heavy Slam, but at this point, Ninetales has done its job. Um, but Tapu Koko, normally Heavy Slam does about half its HP, a little more, but now Leonard doesn't really have to worry about it. He can just go for the KO onto Wolf's Tapu Koko here. Celesteela switching out, Snorlax taking the field in its place as Wolf's Tapu Koko uses Protect for this turn. Tapu Koko on Leonard's side of the field uses Thunderbolt to target down that Snorlax, bringing it down to the point where it's time to have a little snack. You know, use one of those Pinch Berries to restore its health, that Figgy Berry, and the night Icy Wind from Ninetales connects with the Snorlax, lowers its speed again by one stage. Uh, because it's switched out, it's only at minus one speed, but again, it's so slow. It's not going to outspeed Tapu Koko or Ninetales or really anything that we've seen so far in this game. Yeah, seeing Icy Wind there makes me wonder if Leonard even has Blizzard on the Ninetales, because that would be a turn to go for Blizzard rather than Icy Wind, but he elected for the Blizzard. Now, Icy Wind will, would have been able to take out Tapu Koko that turn, so, you know, it's d essentially the same as Blizzard, but... Seeing that makes me question, maybe he doesn't have Blizzard, and that's something Wolf is probably also starting to think heading into game two and potentially three. Yeah, you have to wonder, though, if you don't have Blizzard, what what do you bring? Uh, we're not going to find it out anytime soon. Uh, Arcanine hops on the field in Ninetales place, going to intimidate that Snorlax, lowering its attack by one stage. And it's time for Wolf to re reveal his Z move. That looks like it's the Electrium Z. Uh, Tapu Koko going for a nice powerful, uh, I am blanking on this name right now, but that's okay, because it's a Gigavolt Havoc um, <laughs> that Tapu Koko is going to target down onto the Arcanine. Now this is through Aurora Veil, so it shouldn't KO, uh, which it doesn't. So Arcanine will be able to hang in there, and Tapu Koko... Yeah, Thunderbolt well, from Leonard's oh, Tapu Koko so close. misses the knockout on that Snorlax. It will paralyze it. Uh, not going to stop Snorlax from recycling this turn, getting that Figgy Berry back, and it's going to have another snack immediately, bringing its health back up to above the 50% mark. But after seeing the damage of that Thunderbolt these past two turns, Wolf's definitely starting to think that that's a choice specs Tapu Koko, uh, because normally Snorlax being so bulky, especially on the special end, Thunderbolt, even in electric terrain, just doesn't deal that much to Snorlax, and we saw it deal over half, so uh, Wolf's definitely starting to think that that Tapu Koko probably is choice specs. So again, looking forward into the future games, you can kind of play around it. Um, but right here, that Paralyze doesn't really help Snorlax too much, but uh, it's just at such a low HP. Same with Tapu Koko, that Leonard is in a great spot here. He threatens both Pokemon and even the Celesteel in the back. So Leonard making another switch, sending, uh, sending in that Ninetales to bring back the Hail to deal chip damage to all the Pokemon on the field other than itself. Uh, possibly looking to have that help knock out the Tapu Koko, maybe help out the Snorlax. Uh, Tapu Koko on Wolf's side of the field attacking that Ninetales. Tapu Koko on Leonard's side of the field attacking the Tapu Koko. So if Snorlax moves here, it's free to attack. We might see what kind of uh, boost move it has, but instead Snorlax, you know, not uh, still hungry after eating those two berries, recycles, finds that figgy berry again, and tucks it away in its pocket for later. Yeah, so there's two reasons to bring in Ninetales there for Leonard. Uh, one would be, it, depending on its moveset, it might have a way to really punish Snorlax with the likes of Encore, which sometimes is a tech move that you'll see Ninetales go for. That way you predict this recycle, and now you can lock Snorlax into that. Another way is to just conserve Arcanine. Just be extra careful because Arcanine is great against this Celesteela. You can reuse Intimidate again against the Snorlax. Um, but we'll see if this Ninetales does end up having any tricks up its sleeve. Yeah, Icy Wind will sort of help with the Celesteela situation. You know, it will do super effective damage. The Tapu Koko still threatens the Celesteela. Uh, whatever Leonard's planning right now most likely is going to target that Snorlax, given how all of his other Pokemon... I mean, Celesteela, very bulky, not a Pokemon you want to stare down, but three on one in that situation. Yeah, but with, Aro with Aurora Veil up, having Tapu Koko there locked into Thunderbolt with the Choice Specs will deal massive damage yes. and Arcanine in the back. I'm not too worried about Celesteela if I'm Leonard. 
No, definitely. You want to target down that Snorlax. Arcanine coming out on the field to threaten the Celesteela, threaten that Snorlax, intimidate the Snorlax, so its attack drops another stage. So Snorlax might struggle to deal damage this turn. There it is. Especially given the fact that Ninetales uses Encore to lock Snorlax into Recycle. Uh, going to be snacking for the next five turns on that Figgy Berry, depending on how much damage is dealt. Heavy Slam from that Celesteela going to knock out the Ninetales. And Tapu Koko able to come back in, reset the electric terrain to boost those Thunderbolts or whatever other attack it decides to lock into, and Snorlax paralyzed for this turn. Yeah, since it's locked into Recycle, not really too big of a full paralysis there. Uh, and we saw Celesteela get a defense boost, so now this Choice Specs Tapu Koko can come back in, reset the terrain, threaten a one-hit KO on Celesteela, and Arcanine can just fire away at Snorlax each turn, and eventually once Celesteel is taken care of, Tapu Koko can just finish off Snorlax as well. And Snorlax right now isn't doing anything, so there's no worries from Leonard's end on being able to finish up this match. Yeah, Encore is such a great move for that. You know, being able to know what attack your opponent's going to be stuck using for the next four turns, especially in a situation like this, uh, really just spells out the rest of your battle for you, letter by letter even. Yeah, really paying dividends this match. Uh, we'll see how Wolf combats that in game two and potentially three now that he knows that there is the threat of Encore. So he does have to be wary about protecting with Pokemon that are slower than Ninetales and using setup or status moves. There's that Protect out from the Celesteela Arcanine with an Extreme Speed to target that Snorlax. Tapu Koko Thunderbolts into the Celesteela, and Snorlax, <laughs> there is its, I think, second turn of Encore, so another Recycle finds that Figgy Berry and, again, just tucks it away for later. Yeah, Arcanine doesn't want to deal a whole bunch of recoil to itself. That's why it's opting for Extreme Speed there rather than Flare Blitz. It's going to get the Burry here thanks to the Hail Chip damage. Uh, so no reason for Leonard there to go for the Flare Blitz on Snorlax. Again, Snorlax is just sitting there recycling, not doing anything. No reason to have your Arcanine potentially faint to recoil. Yeah, that, that was a very smart play by Leonard. You know, the combination of not having to deal with recoil and then allowing Hale to uh, give Arcanine the berry to heal itself up. Yeah, clearly planned from the start by Leonard. Definitely. Bringing Ninetales in. Just that turn, he knew that Arcanine was at pretty low HP, needs the Hale to kind of chip damage activate the Burry, and then, of course, the threat of Encore, so. A second Protect from that Celesteela Tapu Koko, again, targeting it with a Thunderbolt. Arcanine with the Flare Blitz. Uh, now that its health is back up, not afraid of the recoil, crashes into that Snorlax, uh, brings it down to uh, maybe, like, 30-ish, but thanks to Snorlax's uh, gluttony ability, it's able to eat that Figgy Berry, and then, thanks to the Encore, it will find it back once again. <laughs> Yep, Wolf is going to need another Protect <laughs> from the Celesteela. The odds of that are not that good, I believe. No, Protect has actually changed so that it's less and less likely each turn to activate uh, rather than just 50% every turn. Now it decreases in uh, probability each turn. So. <laughs> so he was pretty lucky to get that double Protect. If he gets a triple Protect, then uh, I don't know. Maybe he should... Uh not plan on rolling the dice as much for the rest of this tournament because he might use his luck up. Yeah, I don't we, know. <laughs> yeah, we do see Encore End, though. That is very important for Snorlax. Uh, but it's still not in a great spot. Uh, I don't think it can pick up the KO. And Celesteel finally uh, fails to protect. Celesteel unable to protect itself this turn. Arcanine, again, worried about recoil. Extreme speed into that Snorlax. Thunderbolt from that Tapu Koko. Finally able to get that knockout. Celesteel, unfortunately, will leave the field. And Snorlax fully paralyzed this turn. So I, I think that seals up game one for Leonard. Yeah, but some good information from Wolf. Uh, he learned a lot this game. He learned a lot about the Ninetales, learned about Encore, learned about Icy Wind, learned about its item just there, seeing Aurora Veil expire that turn. That reveals that it's holding the Light Clay item, able to extend Aurora Veil longer than you would expect. Um, and even learning about Tapu Koko's item, the likes of Choice Specs, learning about Garchomp being Swords Dance with Tectonic Rage. Uh, Wolf definitely got a lot of information, and in these mirror matches, you want all the information you can get. Yeah, uh, Wolf, he probably... Oh, Snorlax paralyzed again. So we're going to see another turn here. Um, I, I don't think that paralysis really mattered that much, so... Wolf's know. just trying to stall out this electric terrain so that Tapu yeah. Koko is not able to do as much damage, but just the probability of where Wolf is at in this match, I mean, odds are Snorlax isn't going to be able to carry this match, especially thanks to the paralysis, because it would take so many turns for Snorlax to be able to get to the point to win this matchup. 
at some point you're going to get fully paralyzed and just get knocked out. Yep, and that's what happened between this turn and last turn. Uh, Snorlax knocked out. Uh, Leonard Craft taking game one here of round three of Swiss at the North American Pokemon International Championships. Uh, going in, into game two, information will be the name of the game. It's time for Leonard and Wolf to take what they saw in this game one and adjust and figure out, all right, I know what's going down the field, so now what do I do about it? Yeah, Leonard played that match almost perfectly. He played extremely well. I love that Ninetale switch in. Uh, he switched it in at the perfect time. It was under no threat of getting KO'd. Even if Snorlax went for an attack there, uh, wouldn't have been able to knock it out. So at worst, I mean, it's you're still bringing in Ninetales. Uh, it was just the perfect opportunity to bring in Ninetales because you don't want to wait until after Snorlax uses some kind of move like Recycle, like a potential Curse or Belly Drum. You want to get it in there as it does it, which Leonard did perfectly, because once it goes for a Belly Drum, it's just going to start attacking. Uh, so Leonard was able to bring in that Ninetales at the perfect opportunity, lock Snorlax into Encore, give himself some extra turns to just take out the Celesteela, and he just capitalized from there. Yeah, um, it's interesting that you mentioned like the belly drum or the curse or whatever boosting move is on Wolf Snorlax. We didn't see that game one. Yeah, that's true. We did not get to see what the Snorlax setup move of choice was, whether it's curse, whether it's belly drum. And again, that's still going to be really, really important in this matchup, you have to imagine. Yeah, I mean, if there's any player that's really good at managing, you know, what information they give to their opponent in a game one, I think the world champion yeah. might be one of the best people at that. I so. think so. Wolf, it seemed like he gave minimal information that match. Uh, he did lose, which is, of course, unfortunate for Wolf. You don't want to go down 0-1. Uh, but he gained a lot of information, and I can't understate enough just how important that is, especially for a player of Wolf's caliber who is able to really, really utilize that information. Yeah, so uh, Leonard taking... Uh, up until the last second there to pick his Pokemon. So uh, none of these trainers are taking this battle lightly, using every single moment they have to think through their strategy, you know, hopefully perfect their approach and send out the right two Pokemon to start off this match. So best of luck to Wolf, best of luck to Leonard. Uh, let's get this game two started. Wolf sending out Tapu Koko and Arcanine on his side of the field. Uh, so just the same lead as game one, Ninetales and Snorlax out on Leonard's side of the field, changing it up just a little bit. Yeah, previously we saw Arcanine switch out on turn one because uh, Wolf was a little bit worried of the Tapu Koko, which it ended up being spec, so it was actually threatening a lot of damage to Arcanine. So Wolf did make the right call there, switching Arcanine out. But here, Arcanine isn't really threatened by anything. It doesn't care about Nine Tails. In fact, it can just one-hit KO it. Knowing that Nine Tails isn't Focus Sash, Blair Blitz will knock it out. And then Snorlax, uh, it can set up, so you do have to worry about that. But Wolf right now doesn't actually know how the Snorlax is going to set up. Is it going to curse? Is it going to belly drum? Well, he's not going to find out for at least a couple more turns. Uh, Snorlax switching out, Garchomp taking the field in its place. Let's see if Wolf wasted his Z move here. Uh, I don't know. There's going to be the dance, so we'll see what this Tapu Koko decided to target. Did it Gigavolt Havoc into the Garchomp, which as a ground type Pokemon will not take damage? But there it is. We see Tapu Koko going for that uh, huge electrified bolt smashing into the Ninetales. Uh, we know Ninetales is holding that light clay item, so it will be a one-hit knockout. We'll not be able to set up Aurora Veil for the duration of this battle. And Arcanine revealing a very interesting tech using Toxic on the Garchomp. That's big because if Snorlax stayed in, it would have gotten Toxic. Snorlax never wants to get toxic, oh, no. and Tapu Koko outspeeds Ninetales. Wolf was able to pick up the KO there, knowing that Ninetales probably doesn't have Protect, and it doesn't have Focus Sash. You can knock it out before it ever sets up that eight-turn long Aurora Veil. Yeah, and that's I think that's how Wolf wanted to deal with that. You don't want to give Ninetales even the opportunity to think about using that Aurora Veil, and by going for his C-move, you know, while Ninetales isn't the most bulky Pokemon, it might seem like kind of a weird play, you can guarantee that knockout, and sometimes that peace of mind is really just what you want. Yeah, Ninetales has deceivingly high special defense, so you do need that Z move in order to pick up the KO, especially since this Ninetales appears to be trained a little bit bulkier since it's going for a more supportive set with Light Clay, um, not an offensive set with Blizzard. It might not even have Blizzard, uh, so 
that's going to be a bulkier Nine Tails. I think that Tapu Koko had to go for the Z move there. Speaking of Tapu Koko, Leonard sends his own Tapu Koko out on the field. We know it has that Choice Specs item, and we know it threatens a ton of damage here right now. Yeah, we know Garchomp threatens both as well with the Tectonic Rage. So uh, Wolf's still in a tough position despite picking up that KO, but again, it comes down to mind games. We saw last battle how important that is when the Celesteel came in in the wrong slot. Well, it looks like we get a switch from Leonard. That Tapu Koko switching out, Snorlax taking the field in its spot. So Leonard happy with just the threat that the Garchomp brings on the field, not ready to risk that Tapu Koko getting knocked out quite yet. Wolf's Tapu Koko protects, Arcanine protects. Uh, if Garchomp went for something like an Earthquake here, maybe a Tectonic Rage, which it indeed is as Leonard gets ready to uh, dance and summon Garchomp's you know, incredibly powerful attack. It's going to connect with one of these Pokemon through Protect, which means it won't deal as much damage, but it could get a nice little chunk, I guess? Yeah, it'll get a nice chunk, but definitely an interesting play there. Uh, seeing Tapu Koko switch out for Snorlax, so um, yeah. clearly Leonard is looking to just get Snorlax in for free, I think, and maybe set up because he had to figure Tapu Koko or Arcanine were potentially both going to protect or maybe one would switch out to Celesteela, so it does become a free switch in for Snorlax, and if one of them does decide to attack, it is threatened by that Tectonic Rage. That would have one hit KO'd, so maybe that's what Leonard was going for. Wanted to get Snorlax in for free, which he did accomplish, but um, definitely an interesting play. I didn't see it coming. Yeah, I didn't see that play coming either, and it's. I think the really interesting thing is that he switched it out instead of going for the Volt Switch which I think we saw from him in game one. Yeah, we did. Yep. Um, that was also interesting. Um, it just signifies that he really did think either a Garchomp was coming in or a Protect, and he just wanted to guarantee Snorlax getting in for free. So that's what he was going for. That's what he got. Let's see if it pays off. Yeah, well, Tabu Coco back on the field, so... Not really sure why the Garchomp left there, but hey, Leonard is the one playing this game, not us. So I'm assuming he has a plan. Uh, Snorlax le leaving the field, or not Snorlax, Celesteela coming out on the field for Arcanine for Wolf. Volt switch into the Snorlax from Wolf's Tapu Koko. So Wolf given the opportunity here to completely re reposition himself to better uh, counter the Tapu Koko now that is out on Leonard's side of the field. And Wolf does that by sending in his own Snorlax. Snorlax with the high horsepower on Leonard's side of the field attacking Wolf's Snorlax. Yeah, so Leonard not deciding to set up with his Snorlax, instead wanting to threaten the Tapu Koko with the high horsepower, but he did know that Wolf has Volt Switch. I think he saw it last game. Uh, so he had to know that was potentially coming. He also had to know Celesteel was also potentially coming, hence he switched in Tapu Koko. So I actually do really like that switch. It keeps him uh, in the driver's seat there. He's threatening Celesteel in now. Uh, but you don't want to let Snorlax set up for free, so maybe Tapu Koko even decides to attack Snorlax, knowing that it's probably not going to be able to protect and with choice specs and electric terrain, you're going to deal massive damage to it. Yeah, so that Tapu Koko just ready to start dealing damage, provide, provided that Leonard doesn't switch it out quite yet. Celesteela uh, definitely afraid of that choice specs. Thunderbolt switches out. Tapu Koko taking the field in its place, just in time to not be the target of that choice specs uh, Thunderbolt. Instead, targeting down the Snorlax, which will eat that berry in a pinch to restore its health. Snorlax on Leonard's side of the field are. Wolf's side of the field, there's too many Snorlax and Tapu Koko. Uh, frustration into the Tapu Koko, and we finally see a Snorlax use the opportunity to set up. Leonard Snorlax uses Belly Drum to cut its health, uh, maximize its attack, and then eat that Ayapapa Berry to get most of that health back. Yeah, and we saw Wolf has already used a Z-move from Tapu Koko, so not going to be able to knock out Snorlax. Uh, that's going to be big for Leonard. He may be able to keep Snorlax around. Um, it will depend on how the Snorlax is trained compared to Wolf Snorlax. It's very important which one is faster. Um, if Leonard's Snorlax is faster than Wolf's, uh, you know, something on Wolf's side of the field is going down this turn. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so really time to think about, okay, well, which one of these Pokemon can I afford to possibly lose this turn to best set up the Pokemon that still remain? I mean, it is four versus three in terms of how many Pokemon are left, but and Leonard, Leonard may, he may even elect to just heal this turn with yeah. a recycle if he just wants to play extra careful. No switches. Uh, Tapu Koko on Wolf's side of the field going for a Dazzling Gleam, just missing the knockout 
out on Leonard's Tapu Koko, who uses Thunderbolt to target down the Snorlax on Wolf's side of the field, who then frustrations the Snorlax on Leonard's side of the field, who then recycles, finds that berry, and decides to immediately have that snack. Yeah, Wolf missing out on the knockout onto Leonard Snorlax there. Uh, we do see Electric Terrain disappear. That's going to be big for Leonard Snorlax. Uh, Leonard's Tapu Koko should still be able to KO Wolf's uh, Snorlax if it's able to get a Thunderbolt off onto it. Uh, if it goes down to Dazzling Gleam first, then of course it won't be able to. Uh, but Snorlax, you know, it'll take a Dazzling Gleam really well. It'll be able to KO something or heal up to full HP. Uh, Snorlax is going to be really tough for Wolf to deal with here. Yeah, and this is just how you want your Snorlax to be positioned on the field, provided you're running something like Belly Drum. You want it to be able to Belly Drum, you know, restore its health, and then just sort of sit on the field for long enough to um, be a threat. Even if you don't attack or just keep recycling, you know, it's still something very intimidating for your opponent to stare down. Tapu Koko on Wolf's side of the field protecting this turn as Tapu Koko on Leonard's side of the field uses Thunderbolt to target that Snorlax and get a knockout. So Leonard here potentially could recycle and get that berry back without having to worry about taking any damage from Wolf this turn at all. Yeah, great turn there for Leonard. Gets his berry back for free, doesn't have to worry about getting knocked out. Uh, Wolf's Tapu Koko could have knocked out Leonard's there with a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, and put Leonard down to only two remaining Pokemon, but at least Wolf does have Arcanine here that likely has extreme speed, and we've already seen Toxic, so maybe he's going to go for the Toxic onto Snorlax, try and win that way, uh, but we'll see, because if he does go for a Toxic onto Snorlax, Arcanine might get knocked out um, if Tapu Koko ends up outspeeding Wolf's Tapu Koko, but that is also up in the air. Yeah, that's a lot of turns you have to stall for Toxic. It is, especially against a belly drum Snorlax. Especially against a belly drum Snorlax. But Wolf does have Celesteela. Uh, Obvious, or not obviously, but one of the biggest stall Pokemon you think of when you think of uh, the metagame right yeah, now. Yeah, and Snorlax is going to go, it's down at uh, five stages of increased attack, so it's not going to be able to KO Celesteela in one hit, potentially with Lead Seed combined with Protect. Maybe Wolf could stall out the game that way. We'll have to see. Tapu Koko switching out on Leonard's side of the field and then Garchomp coming back out on the field in its place. Tapu Koko on Wolf's side of the field, uh, Dazzling Gleam doesn't knock out the Garchomp, uh, does enough damage to the Snorlax to activate that Ayapapa Berry again in a pinch to bring its health almost back up to full. Oh, Arcanine going for the Toxic onto the Snorlax, but it misses. Snorlax able to knock out the Tapu Koko. Um, when you're hoping to try and stall out a Snorlax, every turn counts, and that missing that Toxic there was just really unfortunate for Wolf. Yeah, it is. Wolf was trying to get himself into a position to have Celesteela um, around, get the Leech Seed up off on Snorlax, have Snorlax get toxic and then have Arcanine also still around and able to extreme speed uh, Leonard's Tapu Koko, which, as we know, will one-hit KO Wolf Celesteel and just ruin that entire plan. But especially now with Toxic missing, it's going to be really difficult for Wolf to pull this out because both of these Pokemon can KO Wolf's Arcanine. Uh, Garchomp protecting itself, Arcanine going for that protect as well. So it's Celesteela versus Snorlax for this turn. Celesteela with the Leech Seed, it does connect with that Snorlax. So Wolf will at least be able to sort of whittle away at that Snorlax's health. Uh, Snorlax attacking into the protecting Arcanine. Yeah, so I think Wolf's going to need a double protect here with the Arcanine. Go for the KO onto Garchomp with Celesteela. That would give him a defense boost to make Celesteela uh, have an easier time of stalling out Snorlax. It would also keep Arcanine around and able to extreme speed the choice specs Tapu Koko when it comes in. Tapu Koko will not be able to protect from that. And then just hope Celesteel can stall it out. But let's see if Arcanine gets it. Garchomp doesn't get no. the second protect. Arcanine doesn't get the second protect. Celesteel with that heavy slam. Uh, targeting the Garchomp for the knockout. Taking a little bit of damage thanks to the rough skin ability of that Garchomp. And Snorlax now free to attack whatever Pokemon it pleases. Could knock out the Arcanine. Could deal a little bit of damage to that Celesteel. Instead, Leonard going for the knockout on that Arcanine. That's going to be game. Uh, as soon as Tapu Koko comes in with the choice specs, it'll be able to knock out Celesteela in one hit. And uh, Celesteela, that recovery from the Leech Seed on Snorlax is not going to matter if you're getting one hit KO'd. So Wolf 
Blade to his outs, he had to go for that double protect. That was really the only way he could end up winning that match. As soon as Snorlax got set up that way, um, it was just so hard for Wolf to come back. Yeah, but sometimes that's Pokemon. When it comes down to these, you know, mirror matches, it's all about the mind games and Leonard just keeping his calm and making the plays where he needed to make the plays. Yeah, he ended up losing his Nine Tails turn one uh, and got nothing in return for it, you would think, on the surface. But burning Wolf Z move there to get rid of Nine Tails really helped uh, Leonard's Snorlax stick around easier because that was one of Wolf's big ways of dealing with Snorlax. Uh, he didn't have the damage. We saw Snorlax barely hang on a couple times, uh, and we saw that Tapu Koko just not able to do enough damage to Snorlax. Um, but if Wolf had the Z move still, he could have knocked out Snorlax. So on the surface, it looked like it was a free KO on Ninetales, but it ended up actually, you know, really costing Wolf. Yeah, Thunderbolt from that Tapu Koko will knock out the Celestia. Both trainers shaking hands, and Leonard going on to the next round of Swiss, still undefeated, 3-0. and A win against the current world champion. Uh, you must feel pretty good going into the next round of Algernat's yeah, run. Yeah, it's got to be, it's got to feel good for Leonard there. He's undefeated, just took down the reigning world champion, uh, and he played perfectly. I mean, he made so many good reads in game one. I still remember seeing that Tectonic Rage go into the Arcanine that switched in. I I'd mentioned that that was a possibility uh, as the turn started because, you know, Snorlax usually doesn't have Protect. It's so common to then target that slot with your Z-move. But he also knew Wolf probably has Celesteel in the back. Why don't you go for the Tapu Koko? That on the surface might seem even more of a guaranteed hit because whether it protects, whether it doesn't, or whether it switches into something like Arcanine, something's going down and Wolf <laughs> got the wrong end of that one in that mind game and that ended up costing him in game one and then game two we saw that Snorlax just too much for Wolf to handle there. Used a Z-move to take out nine tails on turn one, maybe needed that Z-move for the Snorlax because he just didn't end up with enough damage to take out that belly drum Snorlax. Yeah, and that's what happens sometimes. You know, some sometimes you make one play that's you know not the best play, but you think it's uh, decent enough, and then it just kind of snowballs and keeps going. And unfortunately, you can't really recover. But you know, if you're the world champion, that's something that you've certainly faced down before. Yeah. I would hope that you know how to take a breath, you know, collect your thoughts, uh, go over the last game, and then go into the next round fresh. So, yep. good luck to Wolf. Congratulations to Leonard. Uh, we'll be talking to him a little bit later, but for now, we actually have another game going on. Oh, great. Yeah, so uh, there is a Tapu Bulu on the field, I can see, so we'll get to see. I am excited to finally get to see Tapu Bulu. Uh, we have not seen him yet today, I don't believe, but this <laughs> should be the first, so I'm excited to see that. Um, again, yeah. uh, we don't know the game state yet, like whether. <laughs>